Great to have you back, mate. And we've got a big game on our hands. This is third versus second on the ladder. Sandy Bay missed out this year in the under-14 boys teams. Uh, but these two sides have had some very close encounters all season. Yeah, they are um, the two two teams that are probably met a couple of times over the last few years, and from what I've heard, been very close all the time. So, should be good to um, should be a good game to watch. Last time they met, it was a draw in round 15, 511, North Hobart 41 drew with Clarence 6541. So here we go. The national anthem started off. versus North Hobart in the under 14 boys grand final of course Clarence coached by Greggy e. Rogers and North Hobart coached by Matty Ferguson as you can see Greg Rogers getting his charges in there ready to go players to watch for the ruse Williamson Marshall Curtis Leuma Free and Burke who have you got to watch for the North Hobart Demons? Uh, Leo Blair, uh, Corey Cleaver, Riley Wood and uh, Zachary Barrow. Zach Barrow, yep, we've called his name a few times here at Duff TV. But I'm very excited to watch these two sides do battle. We're in for a real ripper grand final here across the nation streaming on Duff TV. So it looks like it'll be Page versus Burke. Page for North Hobart, Burke for Clarence to start us off here with proceedings in the ruck. It'll be very interesting to see what happens in this first five minutes. As we know, the boys tend to get a bit nervous in grand finals. A resplendent day here at North Hobart Oval as the umpire holds the burley above his head, ready to go for this grand final in the STJFL under 14 boys. Ruck contest up in the middle, it comes down, no one touches it. The Demons get their hands on the footy first. Quick kick forward, nicely by Marshall. Down towards half forward for his teammates. The first person down there is the D's player in Matthews. Tackled hard, he's trying to scoop it out. The umpire will ball this one up. Yeah, good start, good attack on the footy, just getting those nerves out. A few fumbly touches early from a few boys. Getting rid of those nerves, getting their hands on the footy early. Ruck contest won again by the D's this time. Spinning out of trouble there, but leaving the footy behind. The D's get the kick forward. Down towards a big man, Van Crennan gets caught behind and a nice strong mark taken down there by Sam Free. Free sends the ball long. Big fly of pack, no one just got their hands on the footy though. Out the back, here's a chance for Banks. He goes in board, that was a good kick. Just put the one mid up, trying to get hold of the footy there was Callanan. Quick one kick forward again there by Rogers. Quick one again by the Ruse and Callanan misses to the right of the goalposts for a behind. Very quick ball movement there from Clarence going forward. Just got it and took it and went, went with it, which was very good to watch. That kick's not a great one as that lands in the arms of Hapka. Just a little fumbly there. Nerves probably getting the better of the Demons player. Hapka, a little too far out to score, so he just pop it up to the top of the square. Over the back rolling ball in front of Charlie Banks goes through for behind. So the Ruse start by peppering the goals. Not able to get a uh, major on the board though. Nice long kick. Easy mark down there for Matthews. Matthews from halfback looks in board. Decides against going through the middle of the ground and heads towards Van Crannan. Punch from behind was good by Free. Now the race is led back there by Williamson. Coming hard at the footy was Triffitt. Now out through the middle. That's good by Leuma. 
His kick goes forward again, just through the fingertips there of the Clarence player. Dees now with strength through the middle of the ground. That kick unfortunately finds an opponent in Burke. Burke with the left foot kick over the top, trying to find a teammate down there in Pennington. Can't quite get a hold of the footy. Bosworth does well over the footy. Nice work by Rogers. Scrappy stuff here. Handball came out from Yaxley. Bosworth goes again. Happy to see it across the line. Boundary throw in. Yeah, just real good from both teams now. Just try getting their hands on the footy a bit more, starting to relieve the pressure on themselves, getting those nerves out. So we'll see a boundary thrown right on the forward 50. Nice bit of elevation by the umpire, but not enough distance. He's going to call it back and have another another crack at it. No, Riley Wood wearing your favourite stack hat there too. I do love wearing a stack hat. I love the players in stack hats because they're easy to identify. Quick kick forward by the D's. Fly at the footy. Nice work there by Burgess. Couldn't get his foot to the footy though. Handball came out. It was sharp stuff by the Roos as they go forward again. Hand up at the footy was Fisher. Fisher kicks it off the ground out into space. Who's going to get there first? It'll be a D's footy if they can just get their mitts on it. Can't quite. Out it comes now. Beautiful work down there by the D's as they go forward. Uh, by the Roos, sorry. Has a chance over the back. Quick kick. Go! No, he's missed it. Reed had more time than he thought. Not a lot of talk down there from his teammates. So three points straight lead the Demons yet to score. And they haven't looked like getting it past their forward 50 just yet. No, it's just struggling a bit as uh, Marshall gets the kick back forward towards Callanan. Over the back again to Reed. Reed gets a chance to make up for his mistakes and put it straight through the middle. Well, that's good stuff by Alex Reed. A little bit more time by the big fella, but great pressure by the half forwards of the Clarence Roos. Yeah, Reed just makes up for his mistake there. Um, much like what we saw in the uh, under 13 game beforehand, as the ball gets over the back, just dangerous, dangerous Clarence forwards putting it through it once again. Yep. Well done. Well called two there by Chris Ransom, our guest commentator for today's grand finals. Four and a half minutes gone. It's Clarence 139 leading North Hobart yet to score. So back in the middle here. Playing one behind the footy here, both teams. Fist one down, nicely out towards Marshall, who got his kick forward. Down into the path of Charlie Banks. The ball avoids him. Then Charlie Banks goes back and gets it. Swings around onto the left boot. Going deep inside forward 50. Almost the mark to Hapka. Couldn't quite. Now the kick comes towards the centre forward position. Good work by Riley Wood. Nice Shepherd. Handball's off to Cleaver. Cleaver got his handball off and the Demons go forward again. Playing behind is Van Crannon. Got his hands free nicely. Gets his kick forward deep inside forward 50. Bouncing ball here. Cut off by the Ruse and they'll clear it momentarily out towards the, the far wing. Austin Field there getting it forward. Been pinged for a throw there uh, has Field. So Townsend will take the free kick. His kick goes wide still and towards his man in Fisher. Fisher swings around, slips as he kicked, but it's going to work out okay. Oh, just left, uh, look too close to the man. Swing around the corner. Charlie Banks with a dribbler through for a goal. Great start by Clarence. Banks has been in everything so far. Well, every time he goes near the footy, he just seems to have that little bit of space, Charlie Banks. Yeah, he's just very clean with the footy. <laughs> um, whenever the balls come near him, he's just been all over it as we watch the replay. Well, couldn't quite get his hands on the footy there, Yaxley, and Banks does what he does best and swings around and dribbles one through for a goal. 2-3-15. They've had five scoring shots in six minutes there, the Roos. So the Ds need to get a hustle on if they are going to be a chance in this game. One down again, someone needs to start playing on Flynn Marshall as that kick comes around the corner, down towards the dangerous Banks. He taps it on, clever stuff by the little man, sends it forward, he's kick a little bit too much on it. Here's a chance now for the cow, through with a handball off and they've got four, uh, three sorry. That was Billy Hapker I think that got that goal, uh, no Sammy, Sammy Rogers. Rogers yeah, uh, great, great goal again, it's um it's Banks in everything again, just got the ball, get the ball to him and he's doing all the work for them. Well, he's got just, again, time. Yes. Jesse Brooks was hot on his hammer, but he just looks time, heaps of time. And that handball was clever out towards Rogers. And Rogers, from a pretty tough angle, got the goal. Yeah, great handball from Cow there, just playing in front. 
led his man to the footy, got those great, got the quick hands out, and uh, yeah, great finish from Rogers. So back in the middle, 21 plays zip, and North Hobart have not looked like scoring. And that one's trapped in, umpire will ball it up. So 21 plays zip. Right contest here, tap down. Got it out nicely to Wood. Wood keeps his head over the footy. And he's dragged it in here, umpire may ping him. He's gonna ball it up. Good decision by the umpire. The Flobart have changed their tactics a bit around the ball now. They're starting to go, starting to lock on, which is helping them a little bit, but they've just got to get that clean ball out and make sure they get it into their forwards. As Quick kick forward by Curtis. Curtis's ball's going to roll out of bounds here, I think. No, it stays in. That wonderful oval Sharon stays in nicely. Hapka, happy to see it across the line. I beg your pardon, that was actually Chris Townsend. And we'll see a ball in. So eight minutes gone in the first term of the STJFL under 14 boys grand final as the ball comes in. Nice ruck contest one down by Burke who's been in everything. Quick kick forward but that one's chopped off nicely by Blair. Blair's got Van Crennan out wide. Decides against going that d distance. Works out okay. Here's a chance for Kelly. Kelly has a bounce. Got his handball over the top towards Van Crennan. That ball avoids him. Through the middle though. Should be picked up here. Yes, it is. Field got his kick forward. Now a chance for the D's as they get it inside for 50. Oh, great work by the defender down there in Williamson who attacked the footy hard. Quick kick forward, dribbler by Burgess over the top through the fingertips of Williams who's good enough to go back and get it. Now some time and space for Burke. Absolute paddock out here for Burke. He just has to be clean here. Not clean. Well picked up there by Wood. Wood surging the ball forward. And that's uh, Triffitt out the back. Triffitt runs into an open goal with a banana and puts it straight through. Well, Brody Triffitt gets a goal and the kick off the boot was pretty filthy really, but it goes through the middle and they just stay in touch here, the Ds. They really needed that one, Chris. Yeah, you just ask Stephen Kernahan, doesn't matter how they go through as long as they go through. <laughs> so nicely done by the Demons. He had a paddock here, he could have run it in. But he decided to send the old bush punt through the middle of the sticks. And as you say, it doesn't matter how they go through as long as they go through. And he's pretty happy with it too. Just a, good, just a good settler there for North Hobart, I reckon. Just settle the nerves a little, let them know that they're in this contest. Ruck, one down on the second attempt by the Ds, but it comes out for the ruse. Quick kick forward. Here's a chance for the little man Pennington. He runs onto it through the fingertips of him though. He just shrugs it nicely there, the D's player, and then sends it forward. Here's a chance if they can keep their feet down the back. That's good work by Williamson. Around the corner, kicks going to bounce. It stays in somehow. Then avoiding the team uh, tackler was the D's player. Quickly handball back. Nice work by Blair to send it forward. Who's going to mark this one? Big fly over the back. Here's a chance for the D's. Quick kick forward by Barrow. Missed the mark. And behind. Just had a bit more time than he thought there. I think Barrow probably could have nearly run that one all the way in. So now the D's, uh, the Roos, sorry to bring it out. Quick kick, Van Cranen just chipping it off nicely. Handballed over the top. Here's a chance now for Marshall. Marshall's got the man Wood on his hammer. Wood gets it out. Quick kick forward again, smothered nicely by Williamson. Uh, Marshall, I beg your pardon. Quick kick over the top. Now out the back. It's Anderson. Anderson, Ezekiel. What a great name that is. Numbers here with the Roos. Nice work down there by Fisher, who's tackled hard. A brilliant tackle. A little bit of scrappy stuff here. Brilliant tackle laid by the Bees player. Worked out nicely, finds Blair. Blair from half back. Sends it long. No one's down there. They let it bounce. Attack on the footy was good. Leuma gets his kick away. D's here with the numbers. Hard at the footy again. Great tackle laid. Probably didn't have it there, so it'll be a free kick going to Burke. Burke from the centre of the ground. Moves it on nicely. Finds Fisher. Fisher sends one long. And deep, maybe a push in the back. Umpire said no. Out the back, here's a chance for Cal. Cal gets tackled hard by his opposing number, double his number, I should say, Ollie Kelly. 
and it's been a ball up. We've got to say, I think that's a goal saving tackle there from Kelly. Really good pressure in the back line. So in a dangerous spot here for the D's as they get the punch away. Quick kick forward, that's a goal. Another one. Well, opportunistic stuff here by the D's, uh, by the, pick your pun, by the Ruse. I think that was Banks again. It might have been actually. Charlie Banks with his second. Let's take a look at the Mood Food replay. Yep, Charlie Banks, goodness me, he's in everything at the moment. Every time the ball goes near, goes near Charlie Banks, he does something with it. It's a real quick snap off the boot. Just shrugged, shrugged a tackle and just laid it in. Great, great contact, great goal. So back in the middle now for that ruck contest. The D's really need to get a couple of goals here if they are to stay in touch. It's 20 points the margin. Ruck contest one down. He's doing big stuff through the middle, Fisher. Out it comes, though, for Cleaver. Sells a bit of candy. Gets his kick out towards his teammate in Moore. But the Roo's doing really well. Leuma out to his mate Townsend, who's got a fortnight out there. Got the kick smothered. And there's down behind play, but his kick comes in again, and that's a mark taken by Blair. Been really strong for North Hobart so far across Sanaf back, Leo Blair. And they're off here again, North Hobart through with a quick kick forward to centre half forward, but in front again, it's very good work from Williamson. Bit of a scrappy ball, spun out of trouble there was Frey, gets his handball forward towards Howcroft. Howcroft off the ground. Demons player in there, gets his handball out. Tackle, great tackle laid there by Hapka. Forward ball again through Frey, great follow-up work. Contest at centre half forward for the Ruse. Slips over as he's trying to kick it. That's uh, Anderson there with his handball through to Reed. Reed gets tackled. Great tackle by Blair there as uh, he gets, gets rewarded for an unbelievable tackle. Yeah, Blair will take the free kick from half back. He sends it out nice and out of Matthews. Matthews with a quick handball off to a running teammate. Quick kick forward again. Down there is Big Wood. He's got Van Cranen at his feet. Van Cranen gets the kick forward, but it's only going as far as Leuma. Touch ball play on was the call. Richardson around the corner with a handball to Triffitt. Triffitt left it behind, and that's called a throw. The Ds will get a free kick. It'll go towards uh, Haremza. Haremza with the double hand drop. Goes long, deep, goal. Should be, oh, goodness me, sprayed it across the face and missed. Every, missed everything. No, he's got it behind. Needed to grab it there, though. Didn't know where that ball was going to bounce. He needed to take it there, Triffitt. So the ruse through Leuma to bring it out. Leuma with a gentle kick. Finds his mate in Williamson. Who's played pretty well at halfback. Sends it low to halfback now. And that is quarter time here at North Hobart Oval. It is Clarence, 4-3-27, leading North Hobart, 1-2-8. Goal kickers for Clarence, two to Charlie Banks, one to Sam Rogers and one to Alex Reid. And for North Hobart, it was one to Brody Triffitt. How did you see that first term there, Chris Ransom? Yeah, obviously Clarence came out and we were on top for a uh, large portion of that quarter, just playing a better footy, seemed to have settled earlier, but North Hobart got that one forward and got a got a goal, which seemed to settle them a bit, and it was a pretty even contest after that. Certainly was. All right, we'll take a quick break here at quarter time in the STJFL Under-14s Grand Final between Clarence and North Hobart. It is Clarence by 19 points with three quarters to go. Stick around next term, coming up next here on Duff TV. quarter about to get underway here at North Hobart over in the STJFL under 14 boys grand final. Went down and listened to Greg Rogers uh, in the Clarence huddle there Chris and he was very very calm. Very calm yeah well you would you would be if, if you have a three goal lead at uh, quarter time of a grand final. You'd I was think. about to say that he's He's very, very calm. He's very happy with his forward line, but very happy with his half back line as well. Doing a great job there to repel all attacks. So back in the middle D's get their kick forward. That's smothered though. This man's been busy, Flynn Marshall. So is Wood, who attacks the footy hard. Great stuff. You can when you've got a stack hat on. And we'll see a ball up. Interesting colour of stack hat down there too, Chris. 
The yeah. old multicolour. It's very bright. I, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. We've got a few boys in the senior club that wear black ones, and uh, they're just a bit, bit boring and plain for me, bland. so I don't, don't mind the colourful stack hat. As the handball came out, that was nicely worked by Townsend. Going hard at the footy. A great tackle again. Townsend went back and got it. Handball. It's been pretty scrappy game so far. No real free-flowing stuff, but that's a, that's a sign of the pressure around the ball. Yeah, it's been great pressure from both sides. You just feel... Um, Clarence has got a bit more outside ball, and that's probably why they're ahead. But you feel if North Hobart can do that, then uh, they'll get up and about. Right, contest one down now. It comes forward for Wood. Deep inside forward 50. They'd love a goal here, the Ds. Leuma goes back. He's so dour then in defence, and he's confident too as his kick comes out towards half forward. It'll beat the players across the ground. We will see a ball in. I'll tell you what. Coach Greg Rogers for the Clarence Boys, he, he's a police officer. Uh, I've seen a couple of the police officers down here before, asked them what they said about him. He said he's a good sergeant. He's a, there's been a free kick pulled out here, or are they nah, going to pull it back? Keep, keep the metre apart, please. But I'll tell you what, Greg Rogers has put in, a, he's 47, and the picture he's put in for the program here is about 20 years old. He looks decades younger than what he actually does in real life, well, that's in a, that photograph. That's all right. As long as no one's coming out in the ground to actually look at him, that's what they'll think they look like. That's right. That one's a little bit too high. Gee, he caught one across the top of the scone there, did Vinnon. And the umpire's going to ball it up. So deep inside the forward 50 for the Ds. This is where they want to lock it in. Burgess in the ruck. Won it down. Van Crannon's in the area, sniffing about. Diving on the footy down there is Curtis, and we'll see another ball up. Yeah, good start from North Hobart here. Just trying to lock it inside 50, just get a score. They need a score here, I think, I feel like. Just keep it in there, try and repeat stoppage after repeat stoppage to get a score. Umpire's called a free kick here. No one nominated for Clarence, I think, in the ruck. So it'll be a free kick to Burgess. Going back from about 35 metres, he'll kick. No one nominated for the ruck, I believe. So Curtis now sends the ball long and sends it through the middle. Well, they needed that pretty desperately, the Ds. Yeah, just a nice, nice goal out in front. I'm not sure why like, the ruck for a kick was paid. There was the same ruckman as the contest before, but um, it's obviously it didn't happen if the umpire called it, so... Great goal to the Ds no, and might be a little settler for them. I watched that particularly closely then because there was a couple of tall boys for Clarence there in the area and we saw um, Remy Burgess put his hand up. No one from Clarence put their hand up, so the free kick was his to have. So back in the middle, margin back to 13 points. Out it comes out the back. Shrugging off the tackle there was... Number 27, who I'm not sure who that is. We'll have a look, though. I'll get that at half-time. Right, contest. One down again to no one in particular. Out it comes for the Ruse. Quick kick forward by Marshall. He's been so good. Trying to mark the footy down there was Blair. Couldn't quite take it. Now a chance out the back for Townsend. Fisher got his handball away just. Now field. Going out at the footy. Townsend again. Round the corner kick there by Field. That one will roll out of bounds. How often does the footy go out of bounds here? Oh, in that spot, that's probably the number one spot you'd think. The uh, umpires would probably stay in that area of the ground more often than not. And uh, throwing the ball in here is Ella McConnon, who, of course, kicked that uh, marvellous goal last week in the celebration, which she tells me has got to 6,000 views on Facebook. <laughs> She'd be counting too as that kick goes forward. It's smothered, though. Around the corner kick by Curtis. Out of bounds on the full. And we will get a free kick going the way of the Ds. Yeah, Ella McConnon. Her dad, of course, was a superstar footballer for the Dosa Roosters uh, for a few years ago. Yeah, nice. they still still t ticks around up there. Does he, D Darren? Yeah, with Dosa doesn't doesn't play, but he does a lot of lot of work up there, and he's an umpire now, I think, too. So, wow, out the back now, quick kick away there by Matthews, big fist by the Ruse player. He's outnumbered here, but he's going to get a hold of it. Quick kick, just a chip around the corner again. Hard at the footy was Wood, got the handball out now. He's going to get it through the middle of the ground. Who's down there? Van Crannon flew high. 
Leuma at the back of the pack. How often's he done that today already? Now the kick comes out for the Ruse. Quick dribble up forward. Bouncing ball. Just shrugged on it nice. Sharked on it beautifully down there was Charlie Banks. But his kick is untoward and finds Matthews. Matthews looking through the centre of the ground here. Gets a kick out towards Field. Field over the back. He's got a bit of work to do here. He keeps the ball moving forward. Clarence player there in Curtis. Gets a kick back forward. Repels it. Out it comes now at half back for the D's. It's going to roll across the line in front of Kelly. So a boundary throw and will ensue. Six minutes gone in the second term here. Clarence, 4-3-27. Lead North Hobart, 2-2-14. 13 points the margin in favour of the Ruse in the 2019 grand final of the STJFL under-14 boys. It's going to have another chance here, McConnell. She's racking up to the stats out there in the pocket, isn't she? Yeah, well, she had a few kicks last week, so uh, good to see. Good to see she's getting some more touches of the footy. Throw in here for McConnell. The Rucks go battle in the forward pocket for Clarence. It's one. It's Clory Cleaver picks it up, looking for the switch across goal. Back through the middle of the ground. This is a dangerous ball. Bosworth get, went into the footy. Great contest there between the two players. Ball still fumbling around the forward pocket for Clarence. Ball, Cleaver comes through, picks it up, gets tackled hard. Wood again comes through on his non-preferred, gets the kick out towards the wing. Ball's come out here with a contest. Clarence player does well in front there. That was Ryan. Ryan gets the back ball back forward to Banks again. Banks at half forward now. Looks in board. That's a clever kick. Finds his man. It's a short one was on to the number 27 who will get for you at half time. Over the top here, but it's a little too much on it. Matthews gets his clearing kick. Now it's into a paddock. Who's going to get there first? It'll be the Ruse player in the form of Williams. He handballs over the top to Curtis. Curtis gets it back. Just a little dribble of forward out on the full. And McConnell again with another stat. Yeah, going, it's continually going to that pocket that you called earlier, Tubes. I think the, ball, the teams have got to try and get that ball away from that pocket if they want to try and score. Kick forward here by Field. Field up to a contest on centre wing. Ball goes over the back. It's uh, Burke there trying to kick, getting the kick back forward. Two players... Oh, Clarence players on the ball here. Handball over the top by, to Rogers. Rogers gets the ball forward to a contest. The ball goes through the legs there of Townsend. Great tackle laid there. Field gets the ball and mops up again. He's been really good back down there for North Hobart. It's Fisher getting the big kick forward, but he's put it out of bounds on the floor in front of that scoreboard again, Tubes. There must be some sort of uh, burly magnet over here. We must, of course, thank our sponsors from the Clarence Footy Club, Parmic, Tyrite and Dyer Grind. If you need your concrete ground down, they're the people to do it. Doing all sorts of grinding work there with their diamond drills. And if you need tyres, Tyrite's the right place to go. And for all your fire protection needs, go and see Parmic. So a free kick going the way of the Ds in that pocket. Little chipper up towards field. Takes the mark nice and easily. Then plays on and slip. Good little tackle from behind by Townsend. A little high up and under. Going back with a the flight there. The courageous player was Clarence. I'm not sure who it was. Wood. His kick is untoward. Finds Rogers. Rogers just with a little dribbler forward. It's picked up nice and then shrugged. Oh, big tackle late on him. The umpire said no play on. Out it comes now for the Ds. Out towards Wood. Wood with a clever touch. Quick clearing kick. It's only going about four metres though. Wood's going to have to go hard again here. It's won by the Clarence player in uh, Curtis. He's going to get it back here. Sends the right foot shoe down towards the big forward. Flying over the back. No one's down there for the uh, Ds. Who's got it? It's Townsend. Townsend tackled hard. The umpire's called a free kick. Holding without the ball. It'll go to Townsend and he'll have a kick from directly in front. Oh, I thought that was very lucky there. I thought he, th thought he threw that one out. But um, umpire's obviously in a better position than we are. Well, they've got the right spot there. So, Chris Townsend. He'll kick from about 15 metres out for the easiest of goals, but it is a grand final. He makes no mistake. Chris Townsend with his first. Margin shoots out to 21 points. Yeah, continu just continue. 19, sorry. Continuing pressure for uh, the D North Hobart backs there. Just Clarence continually putting the ball into the right spots and you're eventually going to uh, wilt under those sort of pressures and it did and it gave, gave Clarence a free kick and a shot on goal. Good kick by Chrissy Townsend. Coach down there for the D's, Matthew Ferguson, just pulling a few moves now. Looks like he's sending 
Jesse Brooks down to the back line. He's got players going one-on-one -on -one in the middle now as well. Ruck contest, one down. Out into the path of Barrow. Left it behind. Trying hard down there was Field. Townsend off the ground. Kept going. G's played a good game so far. Townsend. As that ball just bounces over the top of Billy Hapka. Nice tackle laid. A little bit too high, though, on his team uh, opponent there in Ferguson. Played on quickly. And then, going back with a flight there, Marshall takes the mark. Flynn Marshall's got it on centre wing. Just a little chip over the top to Fisher. Fisher on true centre wing now in front of the George Miller stand. Goes forward towards Callanan. Callanan takes the mark. Half forward flank for the Roos. Look, accessing his options inside 50. Uh, Curtis is calling for it over the back, but he goes short to Reed. Reed drops drops the mark, but follow great follow up gets the footy back from in the scoreboard pocket. Has a ping on goal. <laughs> it's gone for, gone through on the fat side for a point. Great stuff there by Reed to follow up, as you said, Chris. So the D's to bring the footy out from full back. They got numbers on the near side. You can, of course, play on now with that great new rule. I like that new rule. Yeah, I'm a fan of that new rule too. Gets the extra distance. Very good for defenders to get the ball out of the area. <laughs> Classic defenders rule, isn't it? Williamson with a handball over the top. Here's the chance as they move the ball forward. The number 27 who's getting a lot of it and making us not know. Oh, Callanan with a big mark. Not paid. Maybe a few too many fingers on it there, and we'll see a ball up. Yeah, great flight. The footy there is the ball's 35 out from Clarence's goal. Rucks go up to do battle again. It's one down by Clarence. North Hobart player under the footy there is Byers. Byers back on top of the footy again. The ball's locked in as the umpire calls for it. 12 minutes gone in the second term. Clarence 5-4-34 lead North Hobart 2-2-14. 20 points the margin here thanks to Jackson Motor Company. It, the Clarence player tries to get his kick away as a great tackle's laid by Barrow and he'll get rewarded for that lovely tackle. Just caught with it too quickly there, Barrow. Barrow's got it now, looking towards the right straight wing, the George Miller stand wing. Ball goes out, a bit of hold there, but nothing called. Field gets the kick forward, going towards Triffitt. Triffitt's got a paddock to work with, but it's the player that Williams gets back first. Triffitt holds Williams without the footy. Williams will get his kick. Yep. Good attack there by Harrison Williams. So he's got it at half back. Maybe a little overzealous there by Brody Triffitt. The kick goes long and deep. Clarence just with the numbers around the footy. Williamson moves it out, streaming from half back. Hapka tries to collect the footy. It's picked up nicely there by Callanan. Got his handball off to Hapka. Smother. Scrappy stuff here again on the uh, Tubes Taylor pocket, we're calling this. <laughs> the ball's going to. I'll guarantee it'll go out of bounds here in a minute. No, it doesn't. Out it comes now. Nicely worked forward by Field. His kick goes long and deep. Out now. They've got it here. If they can get it off forward, the Ds. They can't. Out it comes for Wood. Wood just needs to look up. He's got Triffitt in the pocket. He goes in that direction. Nice, strong mark. Yeah, great clunk by Triffitt there. Really good kick from uh, Wood. Really good kick from Wood, just wheeling around on his left in front of the uh, Triple M sign and the Roy Kazali stand. Well, there's a BT, Brody Triffitt banner there up above that Triple M sign, if you look closely. Brody Triffitt, so here he goes from a tough pocket. Kicks it nicely, it's across the face just as it gone through, it's a ripper! Brody Triffitt with his second... And the D's stay in touch. There's something about that uh, Ride Street side of the ground that Brody Triffitt loves because he's kicked one in the first quarter from that side and then at the other end he's done the exact same thing. Two m miraculous goals. I didn't. I thought that was definitely across the face, but I'll tell you what, Brody Triffitt knows his measure. Kicked it beautifully. Yeah, hooked back really nicely. Bit of right and left for the right footer and snuck through. So back in the middle here. Not long left in this second term. About 20 seconds, I would suggest. As the ball goes up, tap down. Dees get wrapped up in a Flynn Marshall tackle, and we'll see another ball up. There it is. It's half time here at North Hobart Oval in the STJFL under 14 boys at Grand Final. Clarence 5 4 34 lead. North Hobart 3 2 20. Goal scorers for the D's. Two to Brody Trivett with an absolute ripper there just a moment ago. And one to Remy Burgess for the 
Ruse. It is two to Charlie Banks and singles to Townsend Rogers and Alex Reed. How did you see that first half there, Chris? Uh, yeah, no, really good. I thought um, second quarter was, I thought, a bit more even. But again, it's the jump that Clarence got in that first quarter that's just kept them in front. Um, but apart from that, it's been a very even contest. I've liked the game so far of uh, Marshall, Townsend, Banks and Burke for Clarence. And then for North Hobart, Cleaver, Wood and Matthews, as well as Brodie Triffitt, have had a lot of, had a lot of the footy and a lot of uh, say in their plays going forward. Well, there we go. 14 points to the margin here in favour of the Roos in the STJFL Under-14 Boys Grand Final for 2019. We will take a quick break here at Duff TV and be back with the second half in just a few moments. Stick around. We'll be right back. Well, I'll tell you what there, Chris Ransom, the coach, Manny Ferguson, from... North Hobart has held his charges in there an extra 10 to 15 minutes. We've been waiting for ages for these boys to come out. And Greg Daddy Rogers from North Hob uh, from Clarence, I should say, was very upset on the boundary because his boys have been out there in on the ground ready to go for a long time. Yeah, North Hobart just look like they're getting a bit of an extra rev up, but Clarence has been out there ready to go, and I think uh, we'll just see, have to see how they start to see who got the edge. Well... They'll start this pretty much straight away here at North Hobart Oval. Third term about to get underway in the STJFL Under-14 Boys Grand Final. Field into the ruck. Comes down into the arms of Curtis, who kicks it long and forward down towards Callanan, who comes out to meet the footy. And what a start this will be for the Roos as he unselfishly goes towards Townsend. Just had a little bit too much on it for him. Now the Ds are going to get on the footy through Cleaver. Tapped it forward. Curtis around the corner. Down towards his forwards. Strong mark almost taken down there. Banks on the hands and feet. Quick little dinky kick. Which way does it roll? It rolls and rolls through. Wow. Charlie Banks with his third. Yeah, as we watched it on the replay there, Curtis just gets it in. Blair just straight through the fingers. Banks stays over the top of it and just gets the one that Shane Warne would have been proud of. The amount of turn <laughs> on that ball far out. Unbelievable stuff by Sam, uh, Charlie Banks. Ripping stuff by the little man. And as you said earlier in the first term, every time the ball goes near Charlie Banks, something happens. And how's the luck of that roll? Just looks dangerous up there, doesn't he, really? As, as the ball goes aloft again, we're restarting play. Tap one down there by Clarence. It's Curtis getting another kick forward. He's been good in there so far. It's out towards Banks again. Banks with his head over the footy, wins the ball, steps around one, gets it inside the 50 on his right foot, and it's Callanan there coming up to meet the footy. Been really good so far leading back up at the footy, Callanan. He's a beautiful kick of the footy, Jack Callanan. And his dad obviously played a few games there at Adelaide, currently at the OHA Ships. So here he goes, Fergus Callanan. I called him Jack. That's the other one, I think. That's Jack. Is this Jack? Now it's Ferg. Put in the program. The kick comes out again. Out of bounds. Boundary throwing. Thanks to our sponsors, of course, today from the Clarence Footy Club, Tyre Wright, Parmic and Dyer Grind. Boundary throw in deep in Clarence's Ford 50 here on the Ride Street side of the ground. Ball comes in. One down by Clarence. Lovely tap forward. Ball's uh, head over the footy. There's Matthews. Gets the handball out to Ferguson. Just sort of spits it out. It's Field with his head over the footy. Ferguson goes again. And I think Field's going to get a free kick for holding the man. Yep. It'll go to Austin Field from half back. A lot of movement up forward now. That one goes long. But it's marked nicely by Williamson. Who's been so good at centre half back. Just a real calming influence back there, back there for Clarence. He sends it inside 50. Ball goes through the hands of that North Hobart player there. It's Fisher going forward. By, how's the ball going to bounce? Bounce back towards Cleaver. Cleaver runs into the wall of Callanan. And the umpire has pulled out a holding the man free kick as Callanan took Cleaver to the ground. Yep, so Cleaver will take the kick from fullback. Plays on quickly. Up towards a couple of players down there, but it's all ruse. Through with pace there was free. Free handballs off to Marshall. Marshall goes long down towards Callanan, and Callanan works it beautifully. 
He's in a pocket here. Tough kick. Very tough kick for right footy here, but a great grab. Reads the footy well in the air and just takes it out on, on his chest nice and safe. So here we go. Again, the work at the half forward line by Free off to Marshall was brilliant. Now Jack Callanan, I beg your pardon, it is Jack Callanan. Very similar looking units and that one just to the near side through from behind. Yeah, it's what you see with a lot of footballers really didn't quite kick through the footy and um, ran into a bit of trouble with the miss. Kick out, quick kick out here by North Hobart over the back towards Matthews. Matthews looks inside for the switch of play. Sells a bit of candy to one, runs himself into a bit of trouble. High handball over the top. It's uh, it's Devine with the kick forward now. Out towards Van Crannan. Van Crannan and Pinnington. Van Crannan back towards the football. Marshall comes in hard and wins the footy with his head over the ball. Tackled by Van Crannan. Ball spills out towards Curtis. Curtis gets the handball forward towards Rogers. Rogers with his kick forward. Kick goes forward. Gets through. It's Kelly now with the football. Kelly gets tackled. Ball comes back out towards Wood. Wood with the contest. Kick forward there by Yaxley. Yaxley gets his kick, and that one's just taken the fingertips off of Sam Vinnan as the ball comes forward again for the Roos. Through the fingertips of uh, Banks. Now Callanan with pace. Shrugged the tackle nicely. Handballed off to a running man in Curtis, who goes long and strong towards goal. And it's through. Brilliant stuff down there by Jack Callanan to shrug the tackle. Yeah, just very strong through the core to shrug it. It's really saw him once he got the football. He took took off and looked to make something happen there. And uh, something his dad dad's done many a time before. Just get the get the footy, run around a few, strong through the tackle, quick hands, and lovely finish there on the run. He's very unselfish, Jack Callanan. And you're right, it was Jack Callanan kicking the goal, kicking a goal earlier. But 27 points the margin now, 7-5-47. Clarence lead North Hobart. 3-2-20. Back right. in the middle. Ruck contest one down. Handball came out. Wood off the ground with pace through the middle. Quick kick forward. Which way does this one bounce? Leuma again with that defensive repel. The kick came off the ground nicely. Out it comes here for Bosworth. Handballed off to Wood. Wood with a kick deep inside forward 50. Playing in front nicely down there was the defender for the Roos. Big high tackle laid. It's going against, though. Yeah, got, got pinged for the throw, I think. The lovely lovely tackle there from Barrow. Yep, so Barrow will go back from a tough angle here. Breeze going across his body slightly. So just needs to fade it here to the left-hand post. He'll kick from about 20 metres out, will Barrow. Left footer. Lines up. Oh, brilliant Lovely kick. curve. Great goal. Just line it up beautifully there, Tubes, and just let the let the ball and let the wind take the ball and do the work for him. And the natural arc of a left footer too, just bringing it across the body there slightly. Great work by young Zach Barrow. Just moved nicely through the air, and they stay in touch here. The D's 21 points the margin, 7547 to 4226. Clarence in charge by, as I say, 21 points. Seven minutes gone here in the third quarter as North Hobart look to repel again. 21 points difference as the Rucks do battle once again in the middle of the ground. Ball's won down by Clarence. It's Kelly over the footy. Kelly tries to shrug the tackle. Gets pinged for throwing the football. It's a lovely tackle there by Burke. Burke goes back looking to go forward. Smothered there by Kelly. Burke and Kelly going at it again. Kelly wins out. Gets the kick going forward towards the half-forward flank on the right street side. It's Burgess out in front, followed by Williamson. Williamson wins that battle and burns away before getting his handball out. He has been pinged for holding the football. Interesting decision there by the umpire, but it's worked out okay for the Ds. As Burgess now takes it at half forward, sends it down towards his teammate. Over the back there, it was Barrow who he's looking for. Down it comes now for the Ruse. Barrow picks it up. Gets tackled hard, and that one goes out of bounds in my pocket, and we'll see a ball in. Be a ball up, it'll be a throw in uh, on the North Hobart half-forward flank here. Marshall and Burgess doing battle in the ruck as the umpire tells them to keep that metre, please, boys. Ball comes in. Burgess wins it down, goes through the legs of field. Van Cranen puts his head over the footy, gets a little kick out. 
Ferguson taps, keeping the footy in front, taps it along, taps it along, looking for runners from behind, doesn't get him, kicks it forward back into the 50. It's Bosworth under the football. And here we go again with Triffitt. Triffitt's look lively. Big hit there from the Clarence player in uh, Curtis. Co collected him high there, I think. As we look at the replay there, Burgess with his Triffitt with his head over the footy, and yeah, good call by the umpire there. Yep, just collected him straight across the jaw there. And he'll go back and have a kick. Doing it tough there, Big Triff. And he'll kick from right on 50. So it'll take his best, I think. Nine minutes gone in the third term. Triffitt approaching the mark. Doesn't get all of it. It's going to fall short here as it's punched through for a behind. Did the distance okay, but not quite his best kick uh, Triffitt would have done as he comes off, I think, for a breath. We've got a bit of blood rule here. So the kick will go back. Triffitt got a bit of claret coming out of the nostrils there. Copped a little bit high. It'll be a ball up, I think, on the half forward flank for North Hobart as the blood rule, as Triffitt comes off for the blood rule and is replaced by Bird. Rucks go do battle. Clarence wins it down. Footy's been a bit scrumbly in there. Great pick up by Curtis. Curtis gets it out towards Townsend. Townsend doesn't get it. Cleaver flicks it out to Ferguson. Ferguson with a little fumble. Gets his handball out. Great work getting it forward is Richardson. Who puts it out, on, out of bounds on the full in front of the coaches, uh, in front of the coaches' boxes. So now North Hobart to take the kick. We can't see who it is because they are deep behind that coach's box. It, I think that might be Blair. Kicks it long. Out the back wood. Here's a chance for Ferguson. Can't quite get it. Quickly handballed up again. No, he goes back hard and gets it again. Through the legs there, and it's gone through. Oh, we'll see a boundary throwing. So the D's looking a little bit more attacking this term. And there's been a free kick pulled out here. Umpire's pulled it out. Not sure who it's going to. It might be going to Austin Field. Not sure what that one was for there, Tubes. We got uh, that one on the replay, have we, Jack Duffy, who's working the pots and pans? Can't quite see it. Let's have a look. Might be behind play. I think it's behind play. Umpire called something out here. Don't know, I'm not quite sure there. Maybe a little bit of abuse, perhaps. Who knows? Anyway, Austin Field. Tough angle here. Again, just needs to put it to the left-hand goalpost. Left footer, though, he just hooks it too far. They fly high. Layuma's going to get there first. And happy to see it across the line. Boundary throwing. Throw in here in front of the scoreboard at North Hobart Oval. 11 and a half minutes gone in this third quarter. Clarence by 20 points. Ball will be thrown in, in the forward pocket. Rucks to do battle are Burke and Burgess. Burke wins it down. Van Cranen sharks to tap though. Gets the handball out. Kick forward by Moore. Rushed through by the Clarence player there in Richardson. Again, good stuff in the clinches there by Harry Van Crennan. His hands are very, very quick around those contests. Now the Ruse look to bring it out. They've got numbers out here on the far side. Sends a short one long. Actually, it's no good. It lands in the arms of Henry Yaxley. Yaxley with a short one up to the top of the spot. And a good strong mark down there by Riley Ferguson. Now, you know this young fella pretty well. Has he got the journey here? I don't know if he's quite got the journey here, Ferguson. He'll be looking for a nice little hit up from somebody here, I think. He goes along with the left foot. Gee, how many left footers have we got here at North Hobart? So that one somehow stayed in. Out it comes there for the Ruse. Williams tackled hard. Umpire says no, he got rid of it uh, correctly. And the umpire will ball it up. Ball's been stuck down in North Hobart's half for a long time, but they've got to capitalise here. You, you just feel they've got to kick a goal here just to get on top, get themselves right back into this game going into the last quarter. Rucks one down. Punched away. Here's a chance now for Field. Off to Ferguson. The head sends that one high. Right at the bottom of the pack. That's good by Bosworth. Caden Bosworth here. Um, great. Play with his older brother. So if he's anything like his older brother, he should slot this one straight through the high diddle diddle. Mm, that's a bit of uh, pressure on young Caden. If you're anything like your brother, you'll send it through. He probably won't like that. No, maybe not. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon he thinks he's probably a bit better than his brother, so 
In he comes, a nice little approach. He gets very close to the man on the mark and it goes through the middle. Townsend saying he touched it. I'm not sure he did. And the margin back to 14 points. Yeah, great. Kick through it. Did get a bit close to the man on the mark, but kicks through it really well, straight through the middle. Puts the D's back within three goals. So, interesting third term. It is two goals apiece here to each team. About a minute to go in this final term. No, third term, I should say. And we're back in the middle. Umpires doing the right thing, just checking to make sure that they've got the 6-6-6 happening. Ruck contest one down this time by the D's. Out it comes now. Field. Field quickly sends it long. Down towards Wood. Wood works to the front of the pack. Great contest down there by both those players. Wood again just never giving up. Head over the footy. Attacks it hard. Williamson got his kick away, but it lands in the arms of Ferguson. He gets called to play on. Now the ball comes out here. Oh, just uh, picked it up and let it go, did Matthews. Now the D's are looking to attack, but the Roos have the numbers around the ball. Leuma again. It is uh, Curtis here who's got a bit to go. He takes the footy with him. Goes through. Blair's chasing. Curtis goes long. Down towards the forward line for Clarence. It's a great hit there on the lead for Callan and I believe. Yep. Great footy there. Just got it over the back. Bit of a slingshot from centre half back there. As uh, Clarence just moved it from end to end with ease. They just found some space there. The ruse. So now Jack Callanan will go back right on three-quarter time and hope to put his team a little further out in front. Currently 13 points the margin. He approaches beautiful. Here's a magnificent kick of the footy. And that one goes straight through the middle. Jack Cullinan has his first and extends that margin out to 20 points. Clarence, 7-5-47. Lead North Hobart. 5 Oh, sorry, I should say 6-3-33. Yeah, just a good, good finish there from Callan and Classy. Just a slingshot from centre-half back, though. It started with Leuma at, at centre-half back there. He's been really good for them all day and started a lot of their attacking thrusts forward. I should say North Hobart 5-4-34. I don't know where I get 6-3-33 from, folks, but it is a game on here at North Hobart Oval. STJFL under-14's grand final between Clarence and North Hobart. 19 points of margin in favour of Clarence. Goal kickers for the Roos. Three to Charlie Banks. Then singles to Townsend, Rogers, Callanan, the Jack Variety, Curtis and Reed for North Hobart. Triffitt has two. Bosworth, Burgess and Barrow with one apiece. We're going to take a quick break here at three-quarter time at North Hobart Oval. Final term of this STJFL Under 14 Grand Final coming up next here on Duff TV. Stick around, we'll be right back. It is 8.5.53, Clarence, North Hobart, 5.4.34. 15 minutes to go, Chris Ransom. What is the message for the Demons? Uh, Matthew Ferguson, the coach for the Ds, just said, run, 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 make sure you finish this game off. Don't leave anything in the tank. You've got 15 minutes here to win or lose yourself a grand final. Greg Daddy Rogers was really, really calm there in that third, term, uh, that third quarter uh, huddle. He was super calm. He said, boys, we've got this. We're 13, 19 points in front. We just need to keep going for 15 more minutes. So, scrappy stuff here early as the umpire will re-ball it up. Leo Blair being thrown into the ruck as he wins the ruck tap forward there. Van Crandon's on it first, gets a little soccer forward as the ball comes out. Van Crandon again gets it and he's tackled there by Curtis. Van Crandon gets the free kick there for a high tackle. So Van Crandon will take it from half forward. Send it long. That's not his best kick. It's worked out okay though into the arms of field. Field has Triffitt leading, but he goes now, has to double back. The ball goes deep inside forward 50. Over the back, here's a chance for the Ds. Nice tackle laid. Down in front, that was great stuff by the Roos. Out it comes for uh, Marshall. Marshall going hard at the footy. He's got wood on him. Leuma again. He's been so good down back. Tackle without it. This will be a free kick going the way of the Ds. It'll get, be uh, Remy Burgess who takes it. He needs to slow himself down and have a shot here, I think, Burgess. As he has, and he's put it straight through the middle. 
Wow, All what clear. a goal. Remy Burgess with his second. Incredible stuff there by the big Ruckman. Didn't look, didn't look overly confident there, Burgess, well, but he's eventually that, just put it straight through. That's why I didn't say anything. I thought that uh, Charlie Banks right there on the line might have got his fingertips to it, but brilliant stuff there by Burgess. We, we sort of just let that one go through yeah. without any um, affair. It was just bang, straight through the middle. Yeah, it's great. Great start for North Hobart in this last quarter. A minute 30 in, and it's 13-point ball game. So back in the middle here. 13 points in it. The Dees need three goals. The Clarence boys just want something to happen. Leo Blair gets his kick forward. Coming out to meet the footy. Good shepherd off the ball there was free. Quick kick forward now. Fisher up against Kelly. Kelly just kicks it out of bounds on the full. We'll be upset with that. Fisher sends the ball long. Going back with a flight. That was courageous again by the Ruse player. Quick kick away by the D's and Fisher's going to get another chance. Fisher on the half board flank there in the tube's tailor pocket. Goes forward into the 50. Blair gets the defensive spoil away and it's it's Callanan there with his head over the footy as the ball goes out of bounds. Umpire Ellen McConnell will throw it in there in front of the scoreboard pocket. Two and a half minutes gone in this last quarter. You've been keeping stats on uh, McConnell, umpire McConnell. How's she going? Yeah, How she's, many going she's going very well. I reckon she's up to about 15 throw-ins so far <laughs> today. And, the, and about six out of bounds on the fools yep. too. So no, that's a pretty good effort. Been very good. Earning her money today. Ruck contest one down at the bottom of the pack. That's nice work by Curtis. Curtis from the pocket. Oh, I should have taken that mark there, Yaxley. He's let go. There's a round the corner goal. I think that's Dan Cow. Yeah. Yeah, it was D Daniel Cow there. Lovely, lovely banana there. Just put the pressure on enough to get uh, Yaxley there to drop the footy. Turns in the other way and just a nice little check side straight through the high diddle diddle. I'm not even sure that that was the check side there, <laughs> Chris. That was um, a pretty interesting kick there by Big Dan Cow, but he's got it through the middle. And that margin back out to 19 points. Three and a half minutes gone in the final term of this STJFL grand final between Clarence under 14 and North Hobart under 14 boys. They'd want to get something back over the North Hobart boys, I reckon, Clarence, because in the previous game it was North Hobart over a much favoured Clarence side. Uh, kick goes forward here now through Marshall. Marshall for Clarence. Callanan strong on the lead again. Just takes it out in front. Passes it off now to a running Townsend. Very unselfish footy from Callanan as he tells him just to hold it up, go back and kick the goal. See, that's just that's smart footy from Callanan. That's a tough kick from out there. 40 metres, 50 metres out, whatever he was. But he had his man running down. Smart football by Townsend. It's just knowing to, to run to the spot, but then smarter still by Callanan to get it to his hands. Yeah, just knowing your teammates, knowing that Callanan's an unselfish player and a lovely kick of the footy, just running to an easy spot to kick the goal. So as Townsend kicked towards goal, he's hooked it a little bit to the left hand side, it goes through for a behind. 20 points of difference, four and a half minutes <laughs> gone in this last quarter. So the kick will come out for the D's in the form of Dan Matthews. They really need to get something happening here, they need four goals. Four unanswered goals to get in front. Out the back, here's a chance. That was good again. Quick kick forward by Burke. Will go out of bounds on the full free kick going to the Ds. It'll be Matthews again to take the kick in on half on the half-back flank. Terrace side of North Hobart Oval. The kick goes forward. Thre great grab there by Curtis in front. Curtis sends the ball back inside 50. Forwards guard ball over the back, Ferguson, and it's Banks again <laughs> over the back for his fourth goal of the day. Really well read off hands. Unbelievable stuff from Charlie Banks. Well, again, he is just elusive around the footy there, the little man Charlie Banks, kicking four in a grand final. But Curtis with the mark, and then Curtis with that deep entry inside forward 50. How important is that at North Hobart Oval? when you get those deep entries, because there's, there's no man's land there at about 20 metres out. Just getting it into that hot spot puts the defenders under pressure and it's very, very hard to clear the ball out of there. And Banks just read it the best off the kick and then off the hands, just crumbed it beautifully straight through the middle. So Charlie Banks has four for the day. He'd be going close to being best on ground, I reckon. He's closely followed by this man, Curtis, maybe Williamson 
off the half-back of Flynn Marshall. Wood trying hard. He hasn't given up. Marshall got his kick smothered. Quick kick forward again by Curtis. Out it comes now. Bouncing ball over the top for your man there, Ferguson, who's tried hard all day. On hands and knees down there is the number 27, who we can't get a name on. Apologies, folks. But we will see a ball up. Ball up on the right street side in front of the George Miller, slightly towards Clarence's forward end. The Rucks go up to do battling once again. Ball comes out. Here's Banks again. Banks and Ferguson. Great contest down there today. Banks keeps his feet. Looking dangerous once again. It's the number 27 going forward. Ball goes forward in front of that scoreboard in, at North Hobart Oval. It's Callan with his head over the footy and the ball just trickles out of bounds in front of the scoreboard. Six and a half gone. Clarence by 26 points. Ella McConnell once again. Throw in number 17 for her today. Been very, very good. Be Wood and Burke going up for the ruck in the forward pocket. Burke wins a tap, but then Wood gets it forward. Here's Trifford. He seems to have moved up the ground a bit to get himself around the ball. Ditch attempt by Ferguson to get his match winners around the footy. Bosworth that can't quite pick it up. It's Flynn Marshall there with his head over the footy. Ball still in dispute. Trifford tries to extract it out, but it's number 27 there and Trifford over the footy. Can't find who that is, number 27. Apologies to you, young man. We'll do our best to try and locate that at some stage. Triffitt seems to go in the ruck. He wins the tap down. Only as far as Marshall, though. Van Cranen and Wood trying to work together. It's extracted again by Curtis, but it's unfortunately out of bounds in the Tubes Taylor pocket. <laughs> it's been down there quite a bit today there, Chris, hasn't it? It so has. We'll see another boundary throw in. McConnell doing earning her dollars today. Of course, a great way to earn some money if you're out there and you love your footy. Umpiring is a great way to earn a few bucks on the weekend. Picked up there by Curtis and around the corner, out of bounds again, McConnell. She's leaning all comers for possessions. She would be, I reckon, <laughs> today. She's been very, very good. Boundary throw in here between Burke and Triffitt. Burke gets to the front. It'll be recalled. McConnell, probably the first mistake she's made today, Ella McConnell. <laughs> it's all right, though. She'll make up for it here. Ball being thrown in again. Triffitt and Burke to do battle. Burke, look, Burke gets a tap down. It's there. Ball stuck in there. Fields extracts it off, though. Field gets it forward towards Van Cranen. Van Cranen can't quite get it. The ball trickles out of bounds there on the right, right straight wing. Cla forward of centre for Clarence. So boundary throwing again. Clarence will be happy with this. Just running the clock down. They lead by 26 points. Have North Hobart given up? Who knows as the ball comes in. Triffitt with a big punch down behind. Wood kept going. Here he goes, the stack at. Just can't quite get a hold of it. Into the arms of Williamson. Quick kick forward by the Ruse. Punched away by Field. Down into the arms of this man, Fisher. Fisher unselfishly handballs off to a running man for the Ruse. Quick mark taken by Matthews, and they look to attack again. Okay. That's a clever kick going long towards Ferguson. Just through the fingertips there. It wasn't Ferguson at all. It was Harem's up. Now the kick forward by Marshall. Marshall goes long, deep inside, forward 50. Here's Banks again. He just can't quite get his fists on the footy. Curtis gets tackled hard. Nice tackle laid by Page. And it'll be a free kick going to the Ds. Page looks to switch the footy again. Ferguson's out on this top side of North Hobart. He swings around, looking to go down the guts. Quickest way to goal. Ball bounces forward there. Clarence player coming through. Lovely there was Free. Free gets his kick forward. It's Fisher here on the footy. Ferguson get, keeps the ball in front. Continues on the footy. Great tackle there. Gets his hands out though to Yaxley. Yaxley with the ball. Fisher, great follow-up tackle. Hands out from Yaxley. Cleaver gets the kick forward. Ball's going towards contest there. It's Leoma to, who's over the footy. Leoma gets his handball away only as far as the man in Burgess. Burgess now gets his kick out to Blair who's got so much space. North Hobart is wide open inside forward 50 for the Ds. The bouncing ball just stops basically and the man there first is Rogers for the ruse. His kick is clearing. It'll bounce out now. He needs to follow this up Rogers because Tapping it back, that was clever by Barrow. Van Cranham with an interesting kick down towards Blair. Round the corner for Blair, goal! Brilliant stuff by Leo Blair following up from half back. And the Ds managed to stay in touch. There's ten and a half minutes gone. So four minutes to go, let's say. Yeah. How about this pickup? Just a great pickup. Smart by Cranon. Van Cranon saw Blair there by himself. Just got that little toe poke through. Didn't worry about picking it up. Just got it through to his man there and kicked the goal. 20 points the margin here in favour of Clarence. These two sides have done 
duel all year and had some pretty close contests. It was a big margin in favour of North Hobart round five, three points to Clarence in round 10, and then a draw in round 15. And now in the grand final, we've got Clarence by 20 points. Out in front, Van Cranen goes back, gets tackled without it. He looks back at the umpire. Don't worry about the umpire, Harry. Go and get the footy, mate. Triffitt gets his kick away. Out towards this man, Ferguson, who handballs away only as far as Marshall. Marshall's been so good today. His kick goes deep inside forward 50. Nice, strong mark, Callanan. Callanan at centre-half forward now, looking deep for options. He's done not a lot of movement there, but he finds someone out in front. That's a great kick there to Curtis. Curtis has had a lot of the football today going through the midfield and forward line. You just feel like he might just go back and take his time, take a bit of time off the clock as we see that great mark by Callanan once well, again. Contested marks inside 450 are worth heaps in grand finals as Curtis comes back. His shot on goal looks okay, but it's going to fade to the near side out on the full. Another one for McConnell. Oliver Kelly here to kick it in from the scoreboard pocket at North Hobart. They've got to take their game on now, North Hobart. Roost of a kick from Kelly. Gee. Goes over the head of Van Cranen towards Blair, but it'll trickle out of bounds in front of the George Miller stand. And a great catch in the crowd there by that gentleman. Wow, what a, uh, what a roost there. Have a look at this. He, he's dead set. Kick that 60 metres. Yeah, that's a great kick. That's gone a long that way. Is, that is an enormous, enormous kick. Goodness me. Anyway, boundary throw in. McConnell had some work to do there. And it comes now into the arms of the Ruse. Quickly tap back. Through goes Wood. Wood quickly running down with that left foot. Down towards his teammates there in Blair. Blair using pace through the middle. Just got to dribble this one through. Which way does it bounce? It stays steady. First man on the mark here is the Demons player who overran the footy. Oh, pushing the back there too. Nothing in doing, says the umpire, and we'll ball it up. I thought that one was going to turn a bit more for Leo Blair there. Just didn't quite get it. Didn't quite get it to turn as much as he needed to. Poor Lockie Bird ran over the footy. Just had a bit too much pace up. Rucks go to battle there. It's Liuma again out towards Fisher. Fisher gets the clearing ball. It's real red by Trippett, but he leaves it behind. Clarence player over the footy there. Gets his hands out. It's field here on the left foot. Picks it up. Snaps towards goal. It's going to fade across goal, and it's behind. Tell you what. Dominic Leuma hasn't had many stats, but I tell you what, every time he's got it, he's repelled that attack by the Ds. Out it comes now, free, running the ball down towards his teammates there, going back with the flight. Leuma just didn't have his eyes on the footy, but it's going to work out here for the Demons. They send it inside forward 50. Triffitt goes up high. Now a chance over the back for Blair. Blair handballs over the top. Here's a chance for that man, Perremza, who kicks across the face of goal behind. You just feel like that these last two couple, these last couple of misses probably their chance has gone there, Tubes. Yep, with about a minute to go. Out come the ruse again. Short. They find Marshall. Marshall from the back pocket. Ride street side. Sends it long. Good strong mark. Curtis has been huge in this last term. His kick goes long and deep. Out towards his teammate there and Billy Triffitt, who can't quite get a hold of the footy. Scrappy stuff out there for Brooks. Curtis again extracting the footy, getting that quick kick forward towards the scoreboard pocket, the tube's tailor pocket, and it trickles out of bound once again. It's, it, it legitimately isn't my pocket, but Jit spent a lot of time out there today as McConnell comes in for another boundary throwing. Not long to go. It'll be an 18-point victory, I reckon, to the Clarence Ruse as the boundary throwing comes in. Curtis up against Kelly. Curtis wins it down into the arms of a demon who throws it on the boot. They need to move it fast, and there it is. It is full time here in the STJFL Under 14 Boys at Grand Final. Clarence 10 6 66 lead and defeat North Hobart 7 6 48. 18 points the margin. Goals kickers for the Ruse. Four to my man Charlie Banks, then singles to Townsend, Rogers, Callanan, Curtis, Reed, and Cow. For North Hobart, it was two apiece to Burgess and Triffitt, then singles to Bosworth, Blair and Barrow. Yeah, just great game by Clarence. Really, really good. As the same with the story with the North Hobart team in the past game, just really good team footy. Didn't have one or two outstanding players. Just really good team, a team brand of footy, unselfish footy. That's probably what led to them to the win.
Absolutely. I think the contribution across the board from the Clarence boys was terrific. I thought Charlie Banks was probably my best on ground. You can't kick four goals in a, in a grand final and not be voted best on ground, but we'll see what happens. He'll win an award, no doubt. He's certainly got the uh, medal around his neck, in my opinion. But Williamson Marshall through the half-back line for Williamson, through the middle for Marshall, he was outstanding. The big fella, Ash Burke in the ruck for the Ruse was very good. Uh, Leoma, <coughs> Leoma down back, just yep. did, didn't put a foot wrong all day. He was very good. And uh, Joshy thought, Curtis? Yeah, Josh Curtis and Jack Callan are just the third, number 13 and number 14 out there, worked together brilliantly and... Uh, very very hard team to beat by the looks of it. Yeah, absolutely. And for, for North Hobart, I thought Leo Blair tried hard all day. I thought Brody Triffitt provided a target um, up forward and then obviously copped that knock down forward and had to come off with the blood rule, went back on to be in the midfield. He tried hard. Dan Matthews down back was quite good, but Riley Wood, I think, was probably the best for North Hobart. He just kept trying, kept trying, head over the footy at all times. But what a great game of footy. Congratulations to the Clarence Ruse. Running out victors by 18 points, 10-6-66, repeating defeat North Hobart, 7-6-48. The STJFL Under-14 Boys Premiers for 2019 are the Clarence Ruse. Well, Chris Ransom, thanks so much for joining us here, mate. It's been a treat to have you on board the Duff TV uh, broadcast today. We've got coming up next the under-15 boys grand final, which is between Lauderdale and Clarence, coming up next here on Duff TV. But right now we're going to head down to the presentation area for the presentation of the Premiership medals and Premiership Cup to the Clarence Ruse. My name is Tubes Taylor. Until next time, we'll catch you at the footy. Take care and bye for now. Good afternoon patrons, welcome to today's Crips STJFL Grand Final Day and we've witnessed another very good Grand Final this year in the Under 14 Division. Commiserations to North Hobart, you've had a um, pretty good final series, you've pushed Clarence all the way today so hold your heads high boys, well done on making it through to the Grand Final. Congratulations to our Premiers, Clarence, on a really good season and captivating it today with a Premiership. Well done, Clarence. <laughs> For every game of football we have, we must have a team of umpires. And the team today will be presented with medallions by the umpires coordinator, Mark Waddington, if you could come forward, Mark. Uh, congratulations to both teams for the fantastic uh, way in which the game was played. Uh, commiserations to North Hobart. Congratulations to Clarence on your season. Um, and thank you for your support of uh, the umpires throughout the year. If I... Yeah, all right. Thank you. If I can congratulate the umpires for their performance today as well as their great work during the season. Starting off with our uh, boundary umpires, Jonathan Lovell and Ella McConnan. Uh, goal umpires Nigel Holland and Charlie Doran. And our field umpires, Andrew Walker, Oscar Shinkfield, and emergency umpire, Harry Bourne. Thanks, Mark, and once again, thanks to our umpires today for participating and refereeing this great game. New award this year is the for the most courageous player in the game, and it's uh, named after Alex Godomsky, the Alex Godomsky Fellowship Medal. The most courageous player on the ground today, the medal will be presented by Andrew Hopwood, and the medal goes to Riley Wood of North Hobart.
Well done, old boy. That's a fantastic award. Well done. Just put that around you. Well done. Well done. We now invite the coach of North Hobart to come forward and say a few words, Fergie. Uh, thanks to Tony and the STJFL for the season and for um, this day. So it's the first time our boys have been here and it's a really good, great experience for them. Well, I'm sure they'll remember for the rest of their, lot, their lives. Um, to Doggy and the Clarence boys, uh, you've been in the grand final three years in a row and I think you showed today why. So um, our boys all year have tried to get to your standard so we'll hopefully get there one day and we'll keep trying anyway, so well done. Um, to our boys, um, really proud of the efforts this year. We've come a long way from the start of the year. We're a pretty new group with lots of new players, so I think to make the grand final has been incredible effort and um, I'm sure we'll stick together and, and get bigger and better next year. Thank you. Thanks, Fergie. The best player on the ground medal today goes to Clarence player number nine, Charlie Banks. Well done, Charlie. Now invite Clarence coach Greg Rogers to come forward and say a few words on behalf of his team. Thanks, Tony. Just first off, I'd like to thank the STJFL and the sponsors, Crips, for the magnificent uh, year that they've put on this year again. Uh, to the Fergie to the North Hobart boys, I think uh, roster games, we ended up one win apiece and a draw. So we always knew it was going to be a hard battle against you guys. And watching you play against Sandy Bay last week, in that last half hour in particular, just showed what a quality team you are, boys. So it was a, it was a pleasure for us to um, tackle you today. And uh, I know you'll come back bigger, better next year, so well done. Um, just for the Clarence people, um, just to the families, uh, the support staff that I've had this year, I could never have done it without you. You've, uh, you've always done what I've asked, so I thank you very much for that. And just finally to the boys, I uh, couldn't be any prouder of you today than I have been in the last seven years that I've coached you. You're growing into fine young men and um, I know you're going to make your families very proud, so well done boys. Greg, we'd like you to stay here and call out the players' names to receive their medallions. You want a record or are you just going to call them by name? You want to call them? You want to. No. Uh, number one, Carl Pennington. <laughs> number two, Ryan Williamson. Number three, Flynn Marshall. Number four, Archer Howcroft. Number five, Harrison Williams. Number six, Chris Townsend. Number seven, Sam Rogers. <laughs> Number eight, Billy Hapka. <laughs> Number nine, Charlie Banks. <laughs> Number 10, Jack Richardson. Number 12, Billy Triffitt. Number 13, Jack Callanan. Number 
Number 14, Josh Curtis. Number 15, who's missed the game today is your injury, Fergus Callanan. Number 17, Dominic Luma. Number 18, Angus Fisher. Number 19, Aidan Ryan. Number 21, Sam Free. Number 22, Kane Millichip. Number 23, Zeke Anderson. Number 24, Alex Reid. Number 29, his first year of footy, Ash Burke. And number 30, Daniel Cowell. And the coach, Greg Rogers. Patrons, our 2019 Crips STJFL Under 14 Premiers, Clarence. Yeah. Captain and coach to receive the Premiership Cup. Yeah. Well done, Clarence.